Good morning. I'm Linda Michaels, and I am absolutely thrilled to be speaking at this historic event. And, and I'm having such a fascinating and empowering learning experience at our summit. And it has been so wonderful to meet so many new dog people. So this is what we'll cover in this seminar. Understanding research is the first section. Then making the case for force-free dog training. Providing you with resources that you can use and deliver to people who would like to debate with you and argue with you. Um, then I'm going to discuss types, different types of research studies. There are many. And in that section, the, I have a video of the Russian silver fox study, which is just, just fascinating. And then finally, how I made the case for wolf dog training with my videos of wolf dogs that I have worked with. So I'll be drawing on many areas of specialization. And I need to tell you, I'm not an expert in any one of them. I've combined my education, my skills, and my experience to bring a holistic approach to consulting and treatment as I feel that's what works best in applied settings. And I'm going to be covering a great deal of territory, and there are experts who devote their entire careers to almost every area that I mention. So if you have very specific questions, please use some of the excellent resources that I'll mention and that have been very helpful to me. If you're not well-versed in psychology and how it relates to dog training, I hope to show you how exciting what you're already doing is and how understanding the field of psychology and research helps us all to do it better. If you're already a psychology fan and a practitioner, I hope you may find some nuggets to take home as well. My love of the field of psychology and the beauty of the order of research makes my practice in behavioral consulting and dog training Truly a never-ending learning adventure. This is such an exciting field to be in. Next section, making the case for force-free dog training. And if you would pull out the handout of the hierarchy of dog needs um, that I provided, I want to introduce this resource to you to help you make the case for force-free dog training. The hierarchy of dog needs is making its PPG conference debut. It's a new wellness and force-free behavior modification guide. This is a tool that I have developed as a force-free alternative to the paradigms that have been and that are currently available. And this is a leap forward in progressive, easy referral training guides. And I, I want to graciously thank uh, Dr. Mark Beckoff, who some of you may be familiar with, his work, and Dr. Simon Gedbois for contributing their quotations to this project. The Hierarchy of Dog Needs is available on my website for free, and I invite and encourage pet parents, dog trainers, veterinarians, groomers, and rescue organizations to use it. The hierarchy shares similarities with Maslow's hierarchy of human needs, which we just saw. But you will notice in my hierarchy of dog needs in the training block that neither positive punishment nor negative reinforcement appear. They are purposefully absent. Thank you, thank you. Additionally, although it can be argued that both the removal of rewards, negative punishment, and extinction may be aversive experiences in some regard for a dog, I've opted to include those in the guide. Now that Shiloh, as a pup, up in the left, and you'll meet him in a moment at the age of eight months in a video, shortly after we began training together. Now in my research, I discovered, interestingly, the Czechoslovakian wolf dog. The Czechoslovakian wolf dog, interestingly, is renowned through Europe, throughout Europe for its human search and rescue work. They're a cross between a Carpathian wolf and a German shepherd dog. They're very playful and develop strong bonds with their families. And Czechoslovakian wolf dogs were recognized as a national breed in 1982 by Czechoslovakia. 
And so I began to be concerned about whether the bias against wolf dogs might be related to country of origin. And I looked into how the ranching and hunting industries impacted the American perception of wolves and wolf dogs. And that contribution to the opinion in America is considerable. I also read Nicole Wilde's books, Wolf Dogs A to Z, and her book, Living with Wolf Dogs, and her latest book, Hit by a Flying Wolf. And Nicole Wilde also has a DVD entitled Wolf Dogs, Facts, Myths, and What Trainers Need to Know. That's a very informative DVD. And now there is also Wolf Dog Radio, where both Dr. Ian Dunbar and Dr. David Meat, among other notables in genetics and behavior, have been special guests. And I'm proud to note that I was the second guest on Wolf Dog Radio. <laughs> Thank you.